perform signs and wonders by his spirit. Amen. Oh Lord, like the disciples ask you, Father God, that we have our faith in Christ. We 
Speaking to the mountains Did I remove them Cast them to the sea Lift up your eyes and see The King of Kings Looking to his people I just sense the Lord is kind of saying, well, you're singing it, you're praying it, expect it. Yeah. You've got to expect it to happen. Yeah, amen. It's real. It's right. It's real. It's right. We're not just singing songs, it's real. Yeah, it's right. Hallelujah. Yeah, Mountains are being moved. That's it. Jesus is the one who does it. That's it. He's called us as sons and daughters to be raised up. Yeah, amen. As a witness and testimony in this world, a witness to those people who don't yet know him. It's good to see you. Welcome. Welcome, folks online. Thank you for joining us. Um, it's amazing what God is actually doing. Um, experiencing the power that's in Christ. The, the Lord's been ministering a lot on the... We're Christians, we should have all this power. We should be able to cast out demons like that, raise the dead, heal the sick. The early church did. What's wrong with us? <laughs> Where have we gone wrong? And I'm thinking, Lord, what's going on? Uh, and we're crying out for revival, and we're crying out for this and that. And, and then the Lord says to me, well, you're waiting for me, but I'm waiting for you. <laughs> he says, son... Tell my people that revival is me. I'm revival. I'm the baptizer of fire. Jesus. And he said, we're trying to put the um, cart before the horse. We want to put us first and then expect Jesus to follow us and the Holy Spirit to do what we're doing. And, and, and we have a, a, a couple of hour meetings on a Sunday. And we want him to come in revival fire. And then we have this glorious meeting and then two hours later we shut the door and say, it's all right now, Lord, you can go now. We're going home now. We, imagine that, how that feels to God. I thought, well, I never saw that like that before. How God is so gracious to us. And he puts up with people like me and I thought, oh my gosh, he's amazing. He's so patient, so kind and long-suffering and thank God for that. <laughs> so I probably wouldn't be here if that wasn't the case. And the Lord knows that we're longing for his power and he knows that we're longing for this anointing, this dynamite that's already in us. Holy Ghost, as soon as we're born again, we have the power of God. Uh, a young man or woman of God, uh, a day old in the Lord, has got the authority and the power to cast out demons, to heal the sick. They might not know it that, that way, but that's the truth. We, we've been endued with power from on high. And um, then we have the baptism of the Holy Ghost and the gifts. Uh, and so we're meant to be filled with the Holy Spirit and have, have the anointing come upon us. So we've got this stick of dynamite yes. in God's hands. And we're uncontainable and we're unstoppable because Holy Ghost is the power that yes. raised Christ back to life again. He's the one at the word of Jesus that formed all creation and brought the world into being. It's amazing. It's so amazing. We've been asking the Lord and we've been looking at uh, many uh, weeks really, it's all related. Uh, the whole of the history of the Living World Church is based in revival and preparing for revival. And last week we talked about the cross, we had this ministry uh, focusing around the cross and the, the power of resurrection and how Holy Spirit wants the church to come back into the cross and it's not a very uh, accepted message in these days uh, when I got born again at this particular church this uh, Afro-Caribbean church uh, I'm the only white guy in the church my wife's Jamaican and everybody can see me sticking out like a sore thumb because I'm the only they only look around there's the white boy like in the audience and, sort of <laughs> and I'm going hi folks and there was one day a white lady came in the church and I was waving to her and she was waving to me Another one like me, oh that's great, oh praise God, you know, and having fun in the church and that's how it should be. Be free to be who you are and um, there's no distinction between race and colour and all the creeds and so on. But um, 
the Lord was showing me that the earlier church, even 20 years ago, it was 37 years ago when I got born again, but even 30 years ago in this particular group, they kept on coming out with things like the old hymns, in the cross, in the cross, be my glory ever. And I'm going, what are you on about? We're supposed to come through the cross. We're supposed to come into life. And, and I didn't understand that real life is when we are walking in the death of Jesus. And if we are a seed that falls into the ground and dies to the self, Holy Ghost does that transaction through faith, then we experience the real power, the real dynamite, because I get in the way of God. And we as people... We want the blessing, but we want to be containers instead of the uh, vessels that flow. We, we're meant to be like the rivers, that Jesus said, out of our innermost being flows. <laughs> what? A trickle? Nah. A drop? Nah. A river? No. Rivers, rivers, rivers of living water. He is the life giver. Jesus, come unto me. All you who are weak and heavy laden. So out of your innermost being shall flow rivers. Multiple gifts, multiple languages, not just one tongue. Terry's got a, a Birmingham tongue. Yum, 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 yum. <laughs> and we were praying and, and at the uh, Birmingham has a prayer. He got another tongue, didn't you, Terry? God give you another tongue. I haven't worked it out yet what it is, but it's another tongue. And it's the gifts that flow. And we just have to ask, you see... Because we think everything's automatically handed to us on a plate. And the Lord says, no, seek my face. Seek, I am the giver of the gift. Seek me first. And then all these other things come automatically. And the church gets it all wonky. And uh, we're, we're still like, uh, contaminated uh, uh, with the ways and the things of the world. Like the uh, Israelites in the wilderness. So still uh, uh, Egypt was still in them for 40 plus years. And they wanted to go back to their soup and lentils and stuff. And, and we're like that sometimes. We still want to have a foot in the world and a foot in the kingdom. And God is so gracious to us. But experiencing the real power that's in Christ is when we believe that we already have him. When we know who we really are in Christ. And Holy Spirit, you know, when we read Galatians, when... Uh, Paul was trying to show the, his babes in Christ, the ones he won for Jesus, they're, they're his spiritual children. He wanted to show them that um, when they've been indoctrinized with the Judaism, uh, they're under the law and not under the blessing. And, and then he says, I, I fear for you. I really fear for you that Christ may have to be reformed in you. And I thought that's an interesting yeah. statement. Christ is formed in you the moment you're born again. That seed, the word of God, that is Christ the seed born into your spirit man. You're born again. You have Christ in you himself by the spirit of God. He's physically in heaven, but his Holy Spirit is here with us. He's inside of us. So we have everything. I am the Father of one. I have come to make my home in you. Uh, you know, it's so many words in, in the Bible showing us who really are in Christ. In Ephesians, in one of the translations, in the first few verses of chapter 1, it's in Christ. Yeah. In Christ. Every verse, in Christ. In Christ. I'm going, wow. And then Holy Ghost, Father God, has put us into Christ. Yeah. And Christ in us. Yeah. So we are co-crucified with Christ. So by faith in that fact, I live in resurrection power because Holy Ghost works by faith. Not by feelings. Oh, woe is me today. I'm having a strop. My wife and I had an argument. And oh my gosh, I'm supposed to be a Christian and look at me. I'm not so good at it after all. And it was saying last week, you know, we end up doing this law thing without realising it. We end up trying to be a Christian and and I had a brilliant illustration by somebody in China, Watchman Nee, who I started to read uh, some of his ministry because my family, some of my family are by marriage in China, Shanghai in China. And that's where he was based. And he come out with his statement, there's a law of the spirit of life 
which is in Christ Jesus. And then there's the law of the, of, of the sin nature, the spirit of death. And he says, you know so many Christians, it's like, you, 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 I can do it, you know, I can be a Christian. You know, you've got two bags of sugar in your arms. Look, it's not that heavy. It's not that hard to be a Christian. I've got a, a certain amount of love. I've got a certain level of faith. Uh, and I've got some strength. And I can tell people I love them. Uh, and my emotions can attach to them and, and give them some kind of sense of love. And then after about a year, the weight's becoming a bit harder and and this Christian thing is a bit more, wow, it's, uh, hang on, Holy Spirit, you promised to help me and lift up my arms. It's so hard being a Christian, you know. And, and the Lord's going, what are you doing? And we're going, I'm, I'm trying to be a good person, just like you said. And, and, and gradually the, the law of gravity is too much for us. But we need another law, and that is the law of the Spirit of life, the Holy Ghost, the power where we could, spiritually speaking, hold the weight. Because it's Christ who's holding us here from the inside. It's his power working within us. And we don't really relate to him in that way. We just accept, yeah, I've got, I'm a boring and Christian, and, and, and that's it. I'm satisfied. My name, thank God, is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. But that's where I want to stay. I'll come to church. I'll do some good stuff. Uh, uh, and that's my limit. Uh, but the Lord says, yeah. Yeah, you're only scratching yeah. the surface. He wants us to experience signs and wonders. He, he said in, in the Old Testament, those who know me, they will do great exploits with me and for me. He will do great exploits. And so through us, he wants us to manifest the power of God. He's left us on his planet for a witness and a testimony of who he is. He is the joy giver. He's the only one that satisfies. I don't want to go back to the old nature. It's like candy floss. It's sweet for a second and you're left with an empty stick. Sin is like that. It's just useless. We need the satisfying power of Holy Spirit. And you know what? Jesus said to his disciples in John 16, 23. This is in the King James Version. Hitherto you have not asked me anything in my name that you should receive and your joy will be full. Um, and, and so we, what a statement. Yes. Have you ever asked things in Jesus' name? We do, don't we? We say... Lord, do this in the name of Jesus. Do that in the name of Jesus. And it's like a, a formula to get something from God. <laughs> and I think we missed the point. It's in relationship to who he is. It's in faith to who he is. It's in this um, intimacy where the Holy Spirit is um, developing Christ and developing our nature, born again experience to be fulfilling uh, the satisfying of the Father through the Spirit, allowing us to be who we've made to be, a new person. Many Christians try to minister to the old man. Uh, I've been into these healing ministries sometimes and and they're going about past emotional feelings and past stuff that happened. But when we come to Christ and the cross, yeah. the Lord said, I've made all things new. Yeah. <laughs> and why are you trying to raise, raise the old man to life again yeah. and waste time on fixing? Yeah. Jesus doesn't want to fix the old nature. No. He's made us a brand new creation yeah. where we've got the fullness of joy, the fullness of power. The, everything yeah. in Christ is ours. Co-heirs with Christ. We've got the power of God in us. And then when we have faith for that and we lay hands on the sick, they do recover. They really do. You know what the key is to anointing? Simply do what he said. When Holy Spirit says go, go. You might not know where you're going, but just go. And he'll prompt you because faith has legs on it. Faith doesn't sit there. You know, Peter in the boat. Hey, Jesus, you're walking under water. I want to do that. He had to get out of the boat himself. He got legs himself. He had to get out next. He didn't levitate, did he? No, no. He had to get out of the boat and step on the water. We, crew, we Christians want it all handed to... He, faith is knock on that door. See if that door opens. And if it does, that's me. If there's an anointing on it, that's me. If there's no anointing, don't do it. 
the anointing shall teach you. That's I'm reiterating some of the things we've been looking at. So what God anoints is a yes. What he doesn't anoint is a no. So the simplicity of Holy Spirit, that uneducated people have not got such an intellectual prowess, uh, people that's uh, like in, in some of these countries where they've got no language, uh, hardly any ability to write, even in the foreign languages, and the Holy Ghost can show them uh, just by his anointing what to do and what not to do. It's incredible yeah. how simple God is yeah. to reach people just like us. Yeah. And um, this power... Jesus said, you haven't asked really in my name. And I often wondered that because we quote every day, that we name Jesus in your name. But it's really connected to this personal trust, this personal relationship with him, this personal time we have. The, the closer we spend and more time we spend uh, this love relationship is uh, developed. You know, m my friendship, uh, courting my wife, um, the, it was a blind date, um, an advertisement in a local newspaper a long, long time ago. Oh, yeah. And there wasn't the uh, WhatsApp stuff and all the stuff we have today on f social media and the websites and the uh, Lonely Hearts Club. And I was getting on to be 30. Oh, I've got eight sisters and every one of them tried to fix me up with their friends and that was weird. I thought, they'll, they'll probably think the same about me. And, and, and I was trying to find this perfect woman. And, um, and, uh, and I, I put an advert in the evening mail. And um, I didn't tell my dad, because he was an ex-RF man with a big stick in his hand. It's where we're playing at. And, and, and I wasn't quite as a Christian at that point in my time. But I was being moved upon by the Holy Ghost. And she answered my letter. Pauline and she said here's my phone number so I phoned her up and um, she said I've got a confession to make to you I went, oh what she says I'm black I'm going I'm white so what it was a time when the Lazelle's riots was going on the things as uh, the kind of troubles in Handsworth and, uh, and um, she's just so honest and I fell in love with her voice her voice was so sweet I said I don't care what colour you are, I've got to meet you, you know, I've got to, yeah. please forgive me, but I really want to meet you, no matter what. Yeah. Let's just meet up, and we met up outside of this lady with swimming baths, uh, and had a lovely sports car at the time, uh, which when we got married, I had to sell quickly, because the mortgage rates were so high, and took her out for a meal. She trusted me to take her out, first blind date. Yeah. And I thought, wow, uh, and her pleasant spirit, her, her pleasant smile, and her sweet voice, I call her Sweetheart Pauline, and, and, I, and I just was so interested in a meal together, and I didn't really find much interest in the food. I, I was going, oh my, I, I just focused on her all the time. And, and gradually, gradually, this relationship developed. And uh, to my family, it was quite a difficult thing, because they're not used to another culture group coming into the family. <laughs> but to me, when you have love, love doesn't see colour, doesn't see the differences of uh, culture groups. Love is love, and I believe God's given us a natural love, but his love supersedes far above the human uh, emotion. And so I fell in love with my wife, and within three years was married. And it's that time of um, even courting her and developing like our passion with Jesus, I'm relating this to Jesus, my own relationship. It takes time. Uh, and, and to really know somebody and um, when we got married and we're in the house 24 7 I can't do the things I used to do at home where my mom used to molly coddle me uh, polish my shoes and all the children's shoes at the bottom of the stairs eight pairs of shoes and mine uh, and I've, my school uniform iron shirt uh, food on the table when I come home from school ready brick, uh, breakfast time the flannel on my face and all that kind of stuff holding all their hands going to school and everybody thought it was crazy what a crazy family in them days we always used to hold hands and it was a big family and, and that's a kind of relationship and then I thought my wife was going to be like that she's going to be hey Pauline have you done my sandwiches for work and she's I'm not your mum. That's the first thing she said. And I have to get to learn and adjust 
to her. You see, I, I had to change because she's my wife and the Lord, I didn't even know the Bible then. The Lord says to lay down your life for your wife and, and she's got a Christian background and she knows what she's talking about. And I'm going, oh wow, uh, oh, that was a shock. Uh, well, and I found out my mom, mom, you didn't tell me about this, <laughs> about growing up, because I'm a, I'm a 30 year old, not even grown up in these areas. Of, I'm so dependent on my mom, you know, in them days. And, and so I had a lot to learn. And thankfully, um, I learned and I did the best I could. And um, we're still together after 37 years. And um, she's at work, by the way. And uh, so. I learned from that that our relationship with Jesus is where the power comes, is where this intimacy is. And um, just simply doing what he said. He's the boss. He's God. Yes, yeah, my friend. And I know him as my friend. And as a born again Christian, it's awesome having this honeymoon. Just like our honeymoon wife and I down in Cornwall, uh, St. Gwivian, a little beautiful hotel and a, a magnum of champagne, which I don't even drink, it's all bubbly and I can't, your, blo your belly bloats up after a couple of glasses and what a waste of money. And, and, but you know, the Holy Spirit joy, oh gosh, there's nothing to compare. And um, learning, you see, to be intimate with Christ. Jesus loves us as we are, but he doesn't want us to stay as we are. I've got to change to suit him. He's the groom, and I'm part of, and it sounds strange, but I'm part of the bride. The wedding feast is coming, and, and the men and the women have got to get ready to this intimate relationship with Christ. And so learning to trust him, learning that he will provide like the man provides for the wife and so on. This relationship developing uh, and the women like daughters and he's, he's your husband to come and so on. Uh, and uh, learning that Christ is everything that we need. He is the power inside of us by the Spirit to help us to live the Christ life. It's Christ in us who lives through us. Because it's no longer the old nature of me that lives. It's the, by the life of Spirit of God, Christ in me, that I now live by faith. I'm sort of mixing it up in a little bit to sort of unjargonize it. So it's by faith that we need to say, Lord, I know you to a certain level because we'll spend eternity learning of who he is. Mm -hmm. And while we have a glimpse of him on this planet, it's this cultivating this relationship with the anointed one, Christ anointed and the power that we have being given. So we need to have fullness of joy. Oh gosh, give us fullness of joy. Where it's not fizzling out when circumstances change. When Paul was shipwrecked, he stood in the middle of the boat. Uh, let's have some food, lads. Let's have some communion together. And he's having communion with non-believers, you know that, on a boat. And he's, an angel came to me by night. And Paul's got a beaming face. And he said, not one of us will perish. And there's a centurion and the captain of the ship. Just a crazy guy saying that. And they trusted him. And so he had power with God, Paul. He learned that the joy of the Lord is his strength. He experienced great power, just as the early church did. Because they walked with Jesus at least for three years. Paul himself went aside for three years into the wilderness and, uh, and he learned of Christ. And we need that time as a church. It's a time of gathering ourselves intimately with Christ because there's a revival being prepared for and he's waiting for the bride to get herself ready. So we need to ask Jesus knowing, do we know his power? Do we know what he's capable of? We've read in the word of God. But have we experienced that ourselves? I've had a glimpse. You've all got testimonies, I'm sure, of what God has done, answered prayers. God has done so many things I could spend all day, like you could, sharing testimonies. One of the two of the most ex like, strangest ones and exciting ones is a Christmas Eve, about three years ago. 
And my wife does all these Christmas cards. I don't really bother with that much. And she's gone to work at the Edgebaston Creek Ground to do the, the uh, Christmas Eve. Uh, six o'clock, she gave me the cards at four in the afternoon. I was on the settee sleeping. Holy Spirit, I believe, prompted me at the time to go out. You promised to give some cards out to your neighbours. I looked at the time, I thought, oh gosh, I've been asleep two hours. So I got my coat on quickly, got this bag of cards and went to the neighbour, first one. Up the road is Lauren, a Christian lady. I went to her house as an ambulance right by a driveway. And thought, normally they sometimes stay in their vehicles resting, waiting for the radio call to come through. But um, I knocked on the door and at the same time the wheelchair came out and Lorna was physically having a stroke right in front of my eyes. I had a few seconds to respond and I was prompted by God, put your hand on it quickly and speak this, be healed in Jesus' name. The paramedics are not interested in that, you know. There's a, a, there's a person who needs immediate attention. So as she's going past, rushing, I put my hand on her knee, be healed in Jesus' name, like that. And the, and the ambulance, they was really angry with me. Put her in the ambulance quickly. And then the two children, two of them, son and daughter went in the ambulance, another two on the door. And I handed them the Christmas card. I said, look, I know how you feel. Please, just trust God. Yeah. And it's easy to say that, but when you know how to feel... Sometimes it's best not to say it. I went home, praying for them, praying for Lorna. And my wife came home with a, a terrible cold about midnight. So I was in bed up all night, laying hands on my wife. She's like really heavy stuff going on there. And I went to the window, praying for the family over there, and pointed my hand towards the hospital. And I tried to sleep, uh, on and off sleep. And at the morning, 10.30 in the morning, I was going down our stairs in the hallway. The doorbell rang. One of the daughters that was in hospital with the mum, who was having a stroke, she says, Brian, amazing. The moment she got in the ambulance, she was recovering from the stroke. By the time she got a mile to the hospital, she was fully normal. Her face come back to normal again. Her ability to move, she could speak again, no slurring. She was completely healed in the ambulance of a stroke. That is the power of God. I didn't feel anything. I didn't have an earthquake. It's just boom, boom, boom. Say this, do this. Holy Ghost does it. And that was shocking. I thought, wow. I didn't, even myself didn't even believe that was going to happen. But God touched this woman and made a whole. They kept her in overnight and in the morning gave her all the tests before they released her because it was Christmas morning. And so she was completely well, under the hospital, to come back any time there's any symptom, get her back in quick. But she's co completely recovered from a stroke. That is God that did that. Recently, the COVID-19 lockdown came. You're not supposed to lay hands on people, go without a mask and all this stuff. And uh, I've got an, I had an enemy in our street, the, the leader of the Birmingham Mosque, not far away from here. He lives about six doors away. And for years in our street, his daughter, and they drive down the road, beep, 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 when I'm giving out leaflets and telling people about Jesus, they just don't like the Antichrist, don't like the yeah. Spirit of God. And um, I came home one afternoon, and I didn't know anything about what was happening with this man. He was on his doorstep driveway, and he got a, a tank by the side of him, an oxygen tank and a mask. And I thought, oh, he's probably recovering from COVID or something. And um, I had the prompting of Holy Spirit. He said, son, go now and pray for him. I went, no. <laughs> you know what he's like. It's just like Saul, who the, the, the apostle was sent to pray for him. That man has caused us a lot of harm. I'm not going not to talk to that man. I said, go and pray for him. So I just, I just said, okay. And I locked the car up and I'm up the road. And there's my other enemy who used to swing a shovel at me uh, when I told him about Jesus. And I, he's on the driveway fixing his bricks and there's my enemy. He wants me to go and pray for him. And I've got no mask because it's in the house. And, and I'm in a predicament and, and this Muslim man is going like this, looking at me strange. And I said, look, I know what you're thinking. I just want to ask you, please let me pray for you. Can I pray, please? And I went, yes. He was broken. I put my hand on his shoulder I didn't do anything, but he shook. I said, be healed the same way in the name of Jesus. And I just quickly walked away. I said, God bless you. I'll be praying for you. Six months later, I didn't realise that a lawyer across the road from us, she mentioned this, that 
He was sent home from St Mary's Hospice to die. He was got a few days left to live when I prayed for this man. I never knew that. He was skin and bone, by the way. And I didn't know anything what was going on, but I knew he needed prayer. And he got completely healed of terminal cancer. Fully recovered, miraculously. His own son's a doctor. His own son is doctor, a Muslim doctor. Couldn't believe it. His daughter now is going, waving. <laughs> She's reading the Bible. She's praying to Jesus. I'm praying, God, save that man. Oh, God, save that man. Just two examples of knowing who we are in Christ. I can't preach something that I don't know. I don't want to give you information. And, and I want to see people raised back to life. Imagine all of us being realising who we are and, and the COVID wards and the terminal ill patients. And we just go down there and we just stay, lay hands on them. And they all shoot up out their beds and go, oh my gosh, imagine the church doing that for real. And the government's going, what is going on? The doctors are going, what is happening? Jesus is being glorified on this planet because the power of God is released through his bride. That's what he wants. You see... We haven't really asked him because half the time we don't really believe. I'm talking from my heart. I'm talking truthfully. We have limited faith. But if only, if only we truly believe and ask him big prayers. Prayers that go in. Lord, I don't care if, it, if I'm looking a fool, if it doesn't work. I don't care when I laid hands on that Muslim man. I didn't know what was going on. But I did what he asked me to do anyway. I became a fool for Christ. But I didn't know God was going to heal him. I didn't know God was going to heal Lord Because I have saw my own family, some of my family died of, of uh, a stroke. And it's a serious thing when you see the person so twisted and you know it's serious. And to see them in a few, like a, about 15 or 20 minutes, they're completely healed. That is only what God can do. Yeah. And, and so trusting him, even if it doesn't look good for us, we just follow what he says and do what he says. Because he knows what he's doing. Because that's where the power is. By faith, just saying, God, what do you want me to do today? I'm only scratching the surface of this message I wanted to look at this particular man. The disciples followed Jesus for three years plus, And they saw miracles that we've never seen. It, you know, the creative, the blind eye, the clay into the eye socket and so on. And he wants us to do that. Greater things. The disciples came across a man. John was, saw a man who was casting out demons in Jesus' name. He didn't even have any part of the disciples. And yet he was endued with power. Somehow he, he may have been in the crowds following Jesus. But he didn't associate closely to Jesus. But he believed in him. He must have been a born again Christian to have that power. This man was uh, told by the disciples, don't do that. We're the disciples. We're the real Christians. Have you had that kind of experience? With the holier than now is in the church, and uh, you get these people here. You know, yeah, I'm a Christian, and why? I have got a relationship like you have, and, and you get these sort of attitudes come through. And Jesus said, "Don't forbid him from doing those miracles, because Holy Spirit's working with him." He didn't say specifically like that, but he's implying that this man knows me. He's following me, and so those people. Uh, in the world that we don't know of who are really on fire for God. Yeah. And maybe some of them don't come to meetings like we do, but they have a relationship with Jesus. But there's a time coming when he's gathering all people to himself. And I believe that that man uh, who was at a distance physically was really close to Jesus spiritually. Yeah. To have that power by Holy Spirit to do what he did. Because yeah. Jesus rebuked his disciples, please leave him alone. And he can't speak ill of me when he has that kind of anointing and power because it's the Holy Spirit who can't ever say any bad things against Jesus. It's the Holy Spirit that man had. And I thought, gosh, Lord, teach us more. We've got it all in a box. All of the stuff we do, it's all in our little spherical ideas of who Christ is. But he, he's not containable. Oh, the Holy Spirit is dynamite. You can't put, your fire, put the fire of God in a box and shut the door on it. Revival ain't like that. No. There's going to be a revival. 
that we've been prepared for. And so there's going to be people that God chooses, ordinary folk like us, who are just saying yes to Jesus. Lord, whatever you want me to do, just like Mary said to the servants, just do what he said. Simple. I can do that. If you say so, Lord, I'll do it. Uh, it might get me some scrapes because I've been in some amazing scrapes where you follow the Holy Ghost and you think, I'm out of my depth here. I'm totally out of it. If it's you that can do it, it's generally not God. But if you're out of the... You, you'll say to God, that's impossible for me. Then that's God. Yeah. You see, faith has to be released and the love works by faith, the power works by faith, the miracles work by faith. Faith moves these mountains. And so we're looking at a, a brief message experiencing the power that is in Christ. It's out of this relationship with Holy Spirit. It's out of doing just what he said. Holy Spirit is given to those who obey him and what I found is to do it quick because I've found that many you know you see the church groups today that they'll call the, 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 the fancy platform ministries and they've got an anointing and they'll call people forward and they pray and lay hands on them and pray and then they have a lot of fun in the church on the floor and doing laughter and stuff but they're wasting the anointing yeah. they don't realise the anointing isn't for us. No. It's for the whosoever God's got out there for an appointment with him through us to lay hands on them and heal yeah. them and so on. And so we've got to learn that, yeah, God wants us to enjoy his presence, but what I've given you, he said, I want you to give to others. Freely you've received. Now you dish it out. The anointing is for the body to build up the body and to win souls, to raise the dead, to heal the lepers and so on. And we got this kind of content, uh, containment of the body where this is church. We come and have a great time and worship and we hear a message and then we go home and have our Sunday dinner and on Monday we work in. <laughs> That's not church. That's not what God planned. He plans for us to have an everyday encounter with him. He plans for us to, in the workplace to be able to, in the midst of the mouths of Satan, in the midst of the angry boss, <laughs> to, to love our enemies, to bless them, to curse us, to show these people that we're anointed ones, we've got power within us, uh, and we can do our job in a certain level that they can't because we carry the wisdom of the yes. Holy Ghost where when they can't fix the tool, because I was a tool maker, uh, and uh, everybody can't fix the tool, and the boss yeah. dumped it on my Fine. bench because I'm the temp there at the time. And <laughs> are you a tool maker? Let's see what you can do with this. Nobody else can fix this. Let's see. And I was mocking me. And I was going, God, I ain't got a clue. I don't know what to do with this. And he said, do this. Do that. Check that out there. Just take a little bit off that. Just do a little bit there. Just minor adjustments for about an hour. And the, the, the uh, press set, or the power press set, where to put these tools in to stamp things out. Gold and silver I was working in. And the press said, oh my gosh, it's a waste of time. He ain't got a clue what he's doing. And he puts the tool in and bang, 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 10,000, bang, 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 50,000 gold coin, bolt, gold uh, latchets, things, the hearts that were in there, the brooches. And I was going, oh my gosh. And I says, I haven't got a clue what I was doing, but I prayed. <laughs> and so I had faith with them and I was the last one in that company when it was shut down. I was the last tool maker in that industry, uh, they moved it to Thailand and I didn't want to move to Thailand. And so um, faith with God comes because you carry the Holy Spirit's power, but often we don't utilize who we are in him and what you carry and see all things. Did he say some? He says all things really. And that really is the truth. If he says all things are possible, to those who believe it really is true. If he said you can do all things, then you can. Because it's not me. I can't do a thing. But when I humble myself, I say, Lord, I don't know what to do with this. 
but I know you can. When I'm editing these videos and we've, we've done a lot of work and the Lord gives us a, a gift of creativity and Zoe does a lot of editing and, and stuff. The Holy Spirit's amazing. He gives you the ideas. When something goes wrong with the cameras or something doesn't work properly, he shows you what it is instantly, the word of knowledge. When you meet somebody in the streets, when you meet somebody I used to go in a ball ring and uh, you get the word of knowledge for somebody and they go, how did you know that? Yeah. It's the Holy Spirit working through us. So you see, you've got to recognise it. The body ministry is not for the platform, the superstars. You're God's superstars. Every one of you are his. Oh, apple of his eye. Every one of you are chosen to do mighty things, doing exploits for God. There's no ordinary in God's kingdom. There's extraordinary, supernaturally endued, powerful, anointed Christians to do the works of the Holy Ghost. That is who he's raising us up to be. And I'm just sharing this because that's what he wants the church yeah. to be. A body ministry. You are a co-heir, a royal priest, a representative of a holy nation in Christ. So we've seen God raising up the royal priesthood of some believers. All believers. We're all priests. The old is gone. The Old Testament priesthood is gone. Sadly, the church has carried it into the New Testament with the one-man band stuff. <laughs> and that's not my calling. <laughs> I'm just ministering because God wants to release this in the body so that you can all manifest who Christ is through you. That's the gift is to raise up your calling and your gift to edify, to build you up. That's what ministry is about. And not the super select few who are allowed on the platform. Have you seen that? I have. And now go up and say, I've got a tongue here. Oh yes, you're recognised. You can go and speak. And then the one on the band, on the drum, he's got a tongue. Well, we don't know about you, you stay there. And they're quenching and grieving the spirit. And they've got these chosen ones. You're chosen. Yes, you're you are right. chosen Jesus. for God's glory. Oh, God. Amazing. Amen. He wants to use you. Amen. Oh my. He uses every one of the people of God. We're all members of the same body. And there's only one church. Jesus alone is the head. Not a man or a woman or a minister or whatever. And we've got to learn that there's a, there's a reshaping, a reforming that he's doing now. I'm only just giving you some introduction to this message. I'm not going in past the first few verses. But I, I just want to say I appreciate you being here today. And I hope you've got something from this. Because God is very interested in you personally. And I hope that you'll get hold of this because he likes to hear your voice. Amen. He likes you singing to him. He likes you saying, I know us men kind of think, we can't say this, but I used to cut roses off our bush and present them to Jesus in our house. Shake all the bugs off, you know, and yes. run some water over them. And Jesus, I love you. You're the rose. Behind closed doors, you're the rose of Sharon. And I put the rose to my chest. Oh, I'm in love with you. Sounds weird for a man to do that. But I just said, Lord, I don't care because I'm on my own here. And I just want to love on you and develop this love relation with him. And then he gives me all this stuff. Uh, I, I once trod on a rose in the kitchen. And this scent of this rose. I went in the shops down, down the road, walked to the shops. And I went in the shops and, and I smelled like this rose of Sharon. I thought... Well, with, and I realised that the scent went right into the leather. And, and then for a couple of days, it must, my feet, but the shoes itself, smelt of this rose. And yet Jesus, the rose of Sharon, was crushed like a rose. You know that song, Above All? Yeah. Above All Powers. Jesus was crushed so that when we're actually crushed, that we think we're going to cave in, the power of God's in us, and instead of going down, Holy Ghost lifts us up and he releases the aroma. Yeah. We're air fresheners of Jesus. Yeah. So the atmosphere in the workplace changes because they can call us all the names. They can try and uh, say things about us and mock us. But we've got Christ in us and this love doesn't get offended. It hurts for the person, yeah. not receive their offence because... We should be thick-skinned. <laughs> oh, gosh. When, when we are in Christ, our face should shine, just like the face of Stephen, with the anointing 
we should have the face of the angelic. <laughs> or oh, you picture that when, when the enemy is trying to crush you and knock you down so that you lose faith. Instead, you get back up and start praising God anyway. <laughs> no matter what the devil does, you go, hallelujah, praise God. And you learn to overcome. And that's where the revival is going. How that this intimate relationship. That Christ will be manifest. His power will be seen. Christ will be seen. So I'll end it there. But Father God, I thank you so much for allowing us to be in you. You put us into you. We're part of your body. So Father God, bless every one of us. Bless those who are still online. Lord, thank you that you're here with us. And that you started a message that I just say carry on yeah. next week whenever. But Lord, bless us. Bless every one of you, each and every one of you. And thank you so much for joining us today. And so, Father God, I want to commit this word to you that it won't return void. Because I'm only a, a messenger from you. Yeah. And that's all I've done. I've delivered what you've given. But Father God, you do the work. Yeah. You, you make those seeds germinate. And may the seeds that you've given fall into good soil uh, and bear fruit for your glory. So, Father God, I just say thank you for opening my eyes a little bit more to share what you've given. So bless every one of us and those online. Thank you so much for staying with us. Bless us now, we pray. In Jesus' name, for your glory. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. I've got a saviour. He lives right inside of me. Oh, yeah. His name is Jesus, he means so much to me, oh yeah. He went to the cross to pay for our sin. 